Hi everyone, this is Yukabuka and welcome to my home on YouTube. This is the third video in the Linux kernel exploration series and in this video I will describe how we can use an ARM 64 QMU Linux setup that we created in the first two videos for Linux kernel module programming. We will first write a very simple hello world style kernel module, uh, compile it for the ARM64 kernel and load the module in. Uh, in case you have any doubts about how I have set up the ARM64 kernel on QMU, I highly encourage you to watch the first two videos that I put up on YouTube in this channel. To learn more about kernel module programming, I'd also like to point you to this document here, which I find a very useful resource. It describes the steps you can follow to create a node in slash dev slash proc and more. The name of the document is the Linux kernel module programming guide. Okay, let's get to it. So first, let's write the code for a Hello World style kernel module. In this case, I have already written the source and then you can find it here as hello.c. You can notice that I've placed two files, hello.c and makefile, in the folder named buildroot files. Buildroot files is a folder that whose contents I want to include into the initram fs image that I build later on. Uh, we will get to that in a minute. So let us first try to compile this hello world module. Taking a look at the contents of this module we have the following. First we see a set of includes we see I have added in a few comments to the side of these includes to describe why we need these includes. I don't think all of these are needed for this small example. In this case, we can see that the module is rather easy. There is a module init and a module exit. And the module init prints the string hello world and the module exit function hello exit prints the string goodbye world so what happens is that once you insert the kernel module you will have a string hello world in your d message output once you remove the module from the kernel you will have the string goodbye world in your d message output Let's take a look at how we can build this kernel module. I am opening the make file in the same directory, and this is the content of the make file. You can see the make file for compiling kernel modules is pretty standard. You can see that most of the time it follows the exact same syntax. Uh, there are comments showing why it is written the way it is and I have added a link here as well which explains the details of how exactly a make file needs to be written for a kernel module. I highly encourage you to read this page. Our kernel module is named hello.c and as a result, the file we wish to build is called hello.ko. And, and so we describe the module that we want to build in this format. obj-m equals hello.o. Uh, for an explanation on why the syntax is the way it is, I encourage you to read this documentation. The next important thing is that there are two targets for this makefile. 
The first one is make dash c kernel source subders is equal to pwd and clean. And the default is very similar except that at the very end you have modules. Now the important part is that you should have the kernel source variable pointing to the root of your kernel source code. So it should be make dash c kernel source subders is equal to pwd modules where pwd points to your current working directory and the kernel source variable points to the root of the kernel source that you wish to build the module for. Okay, now that we've taken a look at the make file and hello.c, let's proceed to build the module. Let's execute make. Ah, this is important. We, if we execute make, we will encounter an error because the target kernel is an ARM64 kernel. And as a result, when we build the kernel module, we should be using an ARM64 toolchain as well. So the command to do that would be this. Arc is equal to ARM64. You're specifying the architecture. Cross compile is equal to ARC64 Linux GNU. You're specifying the toolchain and make. If all goes well, you should be able to see an output similar to this. Entering directory, leaving directory, building the module stage 2. And over here you can see that the file hello.ko has been built. Let's try doing a file hello.ko. You can see that it's a 64-bit LSP relocatable, ARM ARC64, and not stripped file. Great. Now that we have built the Hello World kernel module, let's recreate our initramfs image so that it contains the module. If you want to know why exactly this works, I encourage you to take a look at my previous videos. So in this case, we go back to the build root folder. We do a remote of the previous root fs image and do a make again. As we have done this previously, this should be pretty fast. And yes, we have built the initram fs for this, for the VM that we are about to put up. Now that the initram fs is built, we go into the root of the kernel source we remove vm linux and the we, we remove the vm linux file uh, we can also remove the arc arm 64 boot and image which is the kernel file and we can build the kernel once again now if you recall the config file in this kernel source folder has been modified such that config initramfs source points to the root fs.cpio generated by build root. The kernel is building and we're almost done and we're done. So now that we have built the kernel again, let's start up the kernel and verify that the built kernel modules are present in the VM. Okay. All right. On in the root folder, we can see that the hello.ko file is present in the VM. Let's try inserting this kernel module. Okay, we do see a message saying that loading out of free module taints the kernel. However, let's take a look at the tail of D message. We can see that there is the hello world string 
that uh, has been printed out when the kernel has been uh, well, when the kernel module has been loaded in. Now let's try removing that kernel module. Okay, and let's examine the D message output again. We see that the output is goodbye world and that is the line that has been printed out by the kernel module as it is removed from the kernel. So this short video concludes our demonstration of how we can create and use uh, kernel modules with the ARM64 QMO setup that we have created over the past two videos. As always, hit like if you have learned something from the video and hit subscribe if you would like to be notified of new ones.